packaging phage lambda DNA in vitro. If we are going to synthesize recombinant DNA molecules by using lambda genome, so this is also very important steps that we can manage in vitro packaging of the recombinant DNA molecules. Naturally, if we use a lambda genome which has not been modified and it is a wild type and if we use it to infect host organisms like the E. coli, uh, then uh, the plaques may be up to 10 raised to power 6 uh, plaques per microgram of lambda genome it is there. So, uh, the efficiency of plaking uh, it is uh, more or less optimum if we are uh, going to use uh, unmodified lambda genome. On the other hand, if we use modified derivatives, then uh, the frequency may be reduced. For example, uh, the plaque formation may be up to 10 raised to power 3 to 10 raised to power 4 plaques per microgram of vector DNA. So, what is the reason that the plaque formation ki efficiency hai, ये कम हो गई है तो इसमें आपने एक डायग्राम में देखा होगा कि जब लैम्डा जीनोम के दो फ्रैगमेंट्स दैट आर एसेंशियल वन वो लाइगेट करते हैं फॉरेन डीएनए से तो डिफरेंट पॉसिबिलिटीज हो सकती हैं जिसमें एक पॉसिबिलिटी ये है कि डीएनए के जो रिकॉम्बिनेंट फ्रैगमेंट्स बनते हैं वो छोटे होते हैं दैट आर नॉट ऑफ अप्रोप्रिएट साइज तो उसकी वजह से फेज की वायबिलिटी जो है वो रिड्यूस हो जाती है क्योंकि फेज की वायबिलिटी रिड्यूस होगी तो उससे जो प्लेक फॉर्मेशन होगी वो भी कम हो जाएगी सिमिलरली अनदर रीजन फॉर लो फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ प्लेक फॉर्मेशन व्हेन वी आर गोइंग टू यूज मॉडिफाइड लैम्डा फेजेस इज दैट द डीएनए फ्रैगमेंट्स दे आर प्रोड्यूस्ड आर वेरी लार्ज दैट आर देयर साइज में भी more than 54,000 base pairs that cannot be packaged into the phage head. So in this situation, non-viable phage particles, they are uh, produced that can result in the low frequency of the plaque formation. On the other hand, if we use optimum length of the recombinant DNA molecule, that is, uh, between 40,000 base pairs to 53,000 base pairs, uh, then we can get viable phage particles. And by using modified lambda phages, the examples that I have already quoted, the frequency again can be increased up to 10 raised power 6 plaques per microgram of lambda DNA or the vector DNA. So, in this way, the number of plaques formation it may be reduced or even optimum if we are going to use uh, modified lambda phages. This diagram, it indicates the in vitro packaging of the lambda DNA. In the first step, the requirement, it is the head precursor and the head precursors, they are being synthesized by the gene E. And in the next step, the concatimeric DNA it is inserted into the head. As I told you that concatimeric DNA, it is a that type of DNA that contain multiple copies of the same DNA. For example, if lambda genome is there, so number of copies of lambda genomes are there that are separated by the cause or cohesive sites. So because it contain multiple copies of the same DNA, so such type of DNA, it is called as concatimeric DNA. And during the step of packaging product like the gene A, it is having endonucleolytic activity. It will cleave the DNA at cause site and convert it into monomeric form. And this monomeric form, then it will be packaged into the phage head. And then the product of gene D, they are also included during the encapsulation process. And finally, some assembly proteins that included the products of gene W or F2 plus the tail components, they will ultimately 
result in the production of mature phage particles. So in this way we can get the phage particles that contain our recombinant DNA molecule. But under natural conditions the situation may be that uh, this lambda genome it is effectively packaged in the form of concatimeric DNA but in vitro we can also provide the monomeric DNA molecule if high concentration of vital proteins like the phage packaging proteins that included the head or tails are also present. So in vitro packaging can also be effective when we supply the phage particles with monomeric DNA.